So, uh, we're back in Act 1, Scene 2 of The Tempest. Uh, Prospero here, uh, line 185, has just put Miranda to sleep with his magic. And he summons Ariel. Come away, servant, come, I'm ready now. Approach my Ariel, come. Enter Ariel, usually a dramatic sort of entrance in some way, flying sometimes. Uh, all hail, great master, grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds. Uh, so Ariel uh, is a spirit. He's very much associated with the air, hence his name, Ariel. Uh, and we can see that he will fly, he will ride on the curled clouds. Um, he also, though, can swim, uh, so he's uh, comfortable in the water. Uh, he's very strongly associated with fire as well. Um, and, of course, we know from the chain of being that uh, there are four elements, fire, air, water, earth. Um, and the highest is fire. Um, the next is air, then water. Uh, the lowest is earth. We find that Caliban is associated with earth, which shows us his, his lowly status in the hierarchy on the island, whereas Ariel is much more associated with uh, air and fire. So uh, Prospero asks whether Ariel has performed the tempest, as he asked. And Ariel gives this uh, very uh, evocative description of how terrifying his tempest was. Um, and look at all these fire words here. Flamed, burn, flame, uh, lightning, fire, sulfurous roaring. Uh, so we see it, it's uh, really strongly associating Ariel with fire there. Um, but also creating this uh, terrifying description, which um, made all the sailors uh, mad with, with fear. Who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad. Um, so it was, it was quite terrifying. Uh, so although no one was hurt, it, it was a pretty horrendous experience for them. But Prospero ascertains, but are they, Ariel, safe? And Ariel says, not a hair perished. Um, he says, even their clothes are fresh. In troops I have dispersed them about the isle. So they've been dispersed, uh, they've been divided. And we'll see the, um, the dramatic irony that that creates uh, later on in this scene, in fact, when we meet Ferdinand. Okay. Um, all right. Prospero asks, what about the king's ship? Ariel assures him it's safely in harbour. <clears throat> everyone is fine. Um, everyone is um, safe. Uh, because, of course, Prospero wants everyone alive on the island. Uh, he has a, a very carefully thought out plot of revenge to enact against these people. Uh, Prospero says, oh, I've got a bit more work for you, Ariel. And Ariel is not particularly keen about that. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed to him. And Prospero says, How now, moody, what is it thou canst demand? And Ariel says, My liberty. Um, and you could look at that as um, part of one of the play's main concerns with, with freedom, uh, particularly in terms of Caliban, but indeed with Ariel as well. He wants his freedom, as Caliban wants his freedom. Uh, and this little sentence here, uh, it's, it's truncated, so it has that um, 
particularly it, it, it gives it a particular impact it's it's short it's truncated it's dignified um and i think the audience is generally quite empathetic with this idea that ariel wants his liberty he seems to have uh, to be some sort of indentured servant to Prospero. So an indentured servant uh, is someone within a system of unfree labour who is bound by a signed or forced contract to work for a particular employer for a fixed time period. Um, and that seems to be the relationship that Prospero has with Ariel. Although it also seems quite an affectionate relationship. Okay, Prospero says, well, your time's on your contract's not up yet, so no. Uh, Ariel pushes the point and Prospero reminds Ariel how Prospero rescued him from torment. Uh, the foul witch Sycorax who was previously resident on the island. Uh, he goes into the story of Sycorax here. She was banished from Algiers. Uh, and she was brought hither brought with child, which could mean that she was pregnant at the time, or it could mean that she came with her child. And, and that child is uh, Caliban. Uh, then, because thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine. So, uh, Ariel did not do the things that he was asked to do, and uh, because they were not good things that he was asked to do. Um, they were earthy and abhorred. Um, and so Sycorax uh, imprisoned him in a pine tree. Uh, notice this word earthy here, very interesting. Caliban's very much associated with the earth, the lowest element, and so is Sycorax here. Okay, so he was left there for 12 years. Oh, sorry, I'll go back so you can see that. Uh, imprisoned, thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, which is interesting because 12 years is also the time frame that, uh, that Prospero and Miranda have been on the island. Um, now, this is an interesting bit. Uh, highlight this bit. Um, so then they talk about Caliban. So we don't see Caliban straight away. We hear about him and then we see him. Save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled whelp, hagborn. Okay, so this word litter, um, uh, when a, a dog has puppies, you say that it has had a litter. Um, and so this word litter here uh, connects Caliban. It's, it's bestial imagery used about Caliban. So that's this word here, bestial, of or like an animal or animals. Um, and so a lot of the imagery that is used by Prospero about Caliban is dehumanizing. Uh, it treats Caliban as subhuman. So that's interesting to look at when we consider the play from a post-colonial perspective. Because often, of course, uh, colonial rulers regarded the native people as less than human, as inferior. So we've got this word litter here that shows us that. We also have this word whelp. And whelp is another word for puppy. So again, we have this idea that he is a dog. Uh, that, he's not hu that he's not human or he's lesser than human. That he is other. Um, which is very much a post-colonial idea uh, to look at. Okay. Uh, yes, Caliban, um, 
yes, I, it was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that may gape the pine and let thee out. So I am the one who rescued you from that pine. And Ariel becomes submissive. He submits and he's grateful. I thank thee, Master. And Prospero says, if thou more murmurest, if you try to rebel and complain more, I will rend an oak, I will break open an oak, and peg thee in his knotty entrails. I will put you in the guts of that oak tree. So he'll be stuck in this tree uh, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. So again that, um, remember twelve there, popping, pop, cropping up again. Uh, so we see Prospero is being quite authoritarian authoritarian, favouring or enforcing strict obedience to authority at the expense of personal freedom. Um, so we see that happening. Uh, but, uh, you know, from a, a modern perspective, he seems very authoritarian, certainly the way that he talks to Caliban, and we're going to see that coming up uh, later on in the scene. Uh, could be seen as, as uh, too strict, too authoritarian, um, a sort of uh, colonial overlord approach. Um, on the other hand, perhaps a, a different perspective is that we see that when he was in Milan, he was imprudent. He did not show prudence. And as a result of that, he was usurped. Here he seems to have learned to... Um, to be more prudent, to be more careful, to take care of his uh, business of ruling more carefully. And Ariel responds, <clears throat> Pardon, Master, I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Prospero says, Do so. And after two days, I will discharge thee. I will set you free. So he's strict, but he's also, um, he, he rewards people. Uh, well, Ariel. He rewards Ariel. So we see that he does have that generous potential. Uh, what shall I do now? Go make thyself like to a nymph of the sea, Prospero says. Go, hence with diligence. So we can see that Ariel can shapeshift. Uh, which he does later on. He wakes Miranda up um, and he says, come on, we'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir, I do not love to look on. Even the soft-hearted Miranda is not keen on Caliban, but uh, as we find out later, Caliban attempted to rape her, perhaps that is not at all surprising. Prospero says, but as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, to highlight this bit, he does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. So make sure you've highlighted that bit. Uh, and what we see there from a post-colonial perspective is the um, economic exploitation uh, of the indigenous peoples, so Caliban represents indigenous people, we see his exploitation, they're exploiting his labour for their benefit. What ho, slave, Caliban, thou earth thou, speak. Uh, so we can see that, that Caliban is not referred to very gently, he's referred to as a slave. Um, we have this imperative, speak, um, and, and he's referred to as the lowly earth again here, as his mother Sycorax also was. Um, and so that's the end of that section. And coming up, we're going to be looking at um, Caliban a lot more closely.